Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like a promise from a politician. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean anything. So today, on the operating table, you guys actually showed some interest about simple logic circuits and how they work. So, today, we're going to take a peek under the hood. You can see what's going on. What we got here on the table is uh, a little bit of an embellishment on that booby trap short that I released the other day, which I'll link it down in the, the description if you want to take a look. But uh, basically here, we have a normally open proximity switch, which we'll talk about later. The plan on wiring into a relay, which, uh, man, there's a video about these two. I'll link that. Check it out. These things are lifesavers. We're going to hook that up to a pneumatic switch and a light. Let's see what we can't get going on here. First things first, proximity sensor. I talked a little bit about these before, but man, are these things cool. It's basically a switch that needs no physical anything to work. It just has to be in the presence or not in the presence of something. These things are so cool. Here, I got a little explanation on how these things work. There you go. Hook your peepers on this for a second. And this particular switch, it's a two-wire AC switch. Here on the label, just like a motor, it'll tell you what the operating voltage is. So this particular one, 20 to 250 volts AC or DC. This thing's super valuable. You can use it in a ton of different circumstances. So we know the brown wire is the positive or that line one that takes a fused input. It wants to be fused, but it's save time. We're not gonna do that right now. The blue wire would be your neutral line and that's what activates your normally open switch. So when this thing gets activated, the neutral line closes and turns your switch on and off. So the way that these things work, it's not magic in here, it's not little pixie dust doing its thing. There is a high frequency coil in here that creates induction. If you guys saw the video about transformers, you know what induction is. It's a high frequency magnetic field that produces a magnetic flux or a field around it. This thing when it produces that magnetic field, or eddy currents, we call them, it senses what's going on in that magnetic field. And whenever it comes into the presence of something, it changes the resistance of that magnetic field. It changes the current, the eddy currents around this, the flow or the current of that electricity in that magnetic field. And that's what activates that switch. Next in line in our circuit here, a beautiful little 120 volt ice cube relay. Yeah, in the industry we refer to these things as ice cubes, but look at it, it's cute. So, on relays, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but I drew it out for you. There is a diagram of what pins do what. It's got your coil on there, the voltage, and then the different pins for the different contacts and what they do. So, whenever you install this guy, these different terminals correlate with different pins inside this relay. Yeah, shout out to Automation Direct. Holy cow, if you guys get into this stuff, there is no better source to get affordable crap like this. So, if we look here, this is just a drawing of what is on the side of this relay so you can see it. So, our coil, Represented by this squiggly line here, which by the way, that's an industry standard. We have a 120 volt coil. That's what activates this thing and turns it on and off. And then the contacts that we're going to be using is our common here, number nine. This is what's going to have hot in from the wall. So this is going to have 120 volts all the time. But it rests on pin number one for its normally closed location. We don't want that. 
we want this switch to be normally open. So whenever we activate the coil, it turns on and sends energy out to pin number five. And that is how we're gonna continue this circuit. So before we move on to the next component in this system here, I think it's pretty nifty to know, we just created a logic gate. So this guy being a switch in a normally open or normally closed configuration, feeding another switch in a normally open or normally closed configuration, we are creating logic, ones and zeros. And for those that may not know, ones and zeros represent on and off in the digital electronic community. I'm sure you guys have seen this on different appliances and stuff in your house, a one and a zero on different sides of switches. So this here is called a truth table. This OR gate takes different inputs, ones or zeros, so you can have on or off on this input, on or off on this input, a one or a zero. Hopefully you're following along here. So an OR gate kind of is what it sounds like. If this one or this one is on, that means that this one is on. So, if I have both of these on, this will be on. This is on, this is on. This is on, this is on. But if I have neither of these on, then this one will not be on. There's a lot of different ways you can configure gates, but this particular one is the closest to what's going on here. So the next step in this process, we got a 120 volt solenoid valve for a pneumatic system. This gets actuated by a coil that we're gonna run on the output of our relay. And the last component here, we got our trusty little light, just because it's a good example to show output of power. So let's start hooking this guy up. All right, so we're gonna take our main line power hey man another shout out to wagos how awesome are these things especially for examples like this where you just need to hook things in and out real quick so we know from looking at the diagram on the side of this proxy switch that brown is hot and blue is our signal so we're going to go ahead and put our main line in and connect it with our power for our proxy switch. And we know from the diagram on the side of this cube relay where everything goes, I know that I want my normally open side of the contact here to be the output for this entire system. So pin number five, if you look, it's on the opposite side here. This guy will be the output to what's happening. So we can go ahead and hook up our power to our two different outputs to pin number five. We can also hook up our neutrals because electricity has to have flow. Everything has to know where it's going. I know this looks like a jumble, but it'll make sense, I promise. So, here we are, pin number 14. Our coil, 13 and 14, I need a neutral on one side and a signal on the other side to turn this coil on and off. So we're gonna take the signal side of our proximity sensor, hook it up to one side of our coil, and then one last neutral to the other side of our coil to complete the circuit. Awesome. Now everything's put together. Sorry that was a little uh, backhanded, but hey, it is what it is. 
we can now energize this circuit. This guy's hot, she's ready to go. So in our booby trap situation, let's just say that our proximity sensor is on the door like we had. So let's say this is the door coming in, coming in, coming in. Yeah. Tell me that isn't slicker than whale snot, huh? And the cool thing about these relays here, check this out. This little button on the front, this is awesome for diagnostics. You can push this and manually activate this without the sensor. So basically, that is what you guys saw in that short the other day with a little bit of embellishments. I know I could probably explain this a little more detail and slow it down, but I'm trying to keep this to a manageable length to keep you interested. So if you guys want to dive a little deeper into specific components about this thing and how they work and how they work together, or even logic gates, like this stuff is cool when you understand it. When you have a digital logic way of thinking, electricity turns into switches with ones and zeros, and it makes diagnostic so much easier. So if you guys want to know some more, drop a comment and let me know. Until next time.